Hi, I'm Dan, and over the last couple of months I've been rewriting the RX5808 Pro Diversity Code pretty much from scratch. Um, most of the changes are kind of architecturally, so like code structure and things like that. It's a lot easier to add things now, it's a little bit faster, there's been kind of general improvements. Um, but this is kind of a quick overview of how it looks just now. Because I kind of completely rewrite some things, uh, there's been some improvements, there's some new features, but there's also a couple of things missing. Um, so there's still a bit of work to be done in terms of making it how it was before. But because of the code changes, it's a lot easier to add those new features. So we should be able to do a lot more cool things in the future. So when you start the module, it takes you straight to the search mode. Um, but I'm going to skip that for a moment and jump to the menu. So hold down the button, it takes me to the menu. And you can see now the menu has a bit more of a kind of graphical flair to it. So we have icons for the different modes. In a moment, there's three modes. There's the search mode, uh, the band scan, and the settings. Uh, and I'll kind of jump through them one by one just to kind of show you how they are. So I'll jump into the search mode and show you how that works. It's pretty similar to before. Um, the main kind of change is that it's had a, a bit of a UI overhaul and that auto mode and manual mode are kind of integrated. So in terms of the UI, you can see on the right hand side, uh, we have these RSSI graphs showing you the signal strength from each receiver uh, as it comes in, uh, which kind of looks neat. And off the left, left hand side, we have a huge uh, display of like what channel you're currently on and what that frequency is. So at the moment, it's in auto mode. Uh, and if I bump up, you'll see it start to scan and it will find my quadcopter, which is plugged in right next to me. So the way auto mode works now is a little bit different. Rather than just finding a peak and then immediately stopping there as it scans through, it finds that peak and then continues to search a little bit further to see if it can find an even larger peak. So they, this kind of stops the, the receiver from kind of like halting the search on the spread of channels you get from your transmitter. And it tends to pretty much, it tends to accurately lock on the actual channel it should be. So at the moment, my quadcopter is on next to me, transmitting on L band five, which is a little bit naughty, but, but yeah, so you can see kind of like, as it scans through, it finds L five and then kind of goes a little bit further. And that's the, the kind of like, the like smart search. I don't really know what to call it, but yeah. So it, it kind of makes the, the auto search a bit more reliable. Now, one of the other changes to the search mode and potentially all modes as more changes are made to the firmware is if you hold down your mode button, button for a little bit you get this kind of like side pop-up menu um, and this is where you can change uh, if it's auto mode or manual mode and also what order the scanning is done in so uh, this first little one here is between auto and manual mode and this bottom one is uh, either by frequency or by channel. So if I switch into manual mode and hold down the button again, let it go, type menu, you can see I can now like bump through them manually. And this is in channel mode, so it goes up it sequentially. And if I go in again and change this to frequency, close it again, and bump up, you can kind of see how it scrolls through it. So one of the newer features is uh, autosave. So when you settle on a channel, either via auto scan or manual scan, or you change uh, between auto scan or manual scan, or you change the ordering of the, the scanning from frequency to channel or vice versa, after a couple of seconds, it'll automatically save that. So if I go into the menu, we're in manual mode right now, I bump up to B8, for example, Wait a couple of seconds, then unplug my goggles, and then plug them back in. You'll see that it opens up on B8, so you don't need to hold down the button anymore basically to save what channel you're on. Uh, and the same goes for these uh, settings on the side, so if I change the auto mode and then, I don't know, frequency mode, wait a couple of seconds again. Then unplug, plug back in, 
then we check the menu again. We can see we're on auto mode and frequency mode. So that's kind of just like an extra useful part there rather than you to press the button all the time uh, to save which channel you're on. The next thing I'll show is the band scan. There hasn't been much changes there. Uh, it looks a little bit different, but may as well show it off anyway. Uh, now to get to the menu from the current mode you're in, you basically just hold down the button. Eventually it'll go to the menu. Um, so the next mode I'll go into is the band scan mode. This works pretty much exactly the same as before, um, but this is one of the places where uh, there's some features missing. So at the moment it doesn't show you uh, which channel has the best RSSI anymore. Uh, so it's kind of somewhere where it can be improved and it's also somewhere I'd ideally like to add some extra features. Um, so I've got my quadcopter disconnected now and when I plug in, make the horrible beeping sounds and you'll see it detects the peaks from the channel. For whatever reason, the peaks from the transmitter in this are horrendous but it gives you a good idea of kind of how it looks. So the last mode is uh, settings mode. This is one of the places where it needs a bit more work. Um, basically the only setting is uh, to run the calibration. So there's some extra things that need to be added there, like being able to toggle when the beeper beeps and things like that. Um, but I'll kind of run through it before. It works pretty much exactly the same way as before. You go into it and ask you if you want to run calibration. It'll tell you to turn off all your video transmitters you press the button and it'll scan for the lowest RSSI and then it will ask you to turn on your video transfer. So I will plug in the quadcopter again and it'll make a ton of horrible sounds. And then once it's fully booted up, I'll press the button again and it'll scan for the highest, highest RSSI value. And once it's done, that'll be it. And press the button to save. So this is a screensaver. Uh, Kind of similar to before, it shows up maybe 20, 30 seconds uh, after you haven't pressed the button for a while. Um, and one of the main changes is, rather than having a text-based call sign, uh, it uses your your logo. So, kind of a lot of people were changing their boot logo and stuff as kind of a way to personalize their uh, goggles and stuff like that. So this kind of brings that to like a next level, I guess. Um, so, kind of changing it is the same way as before, but rather than just showing it starting out, it shows kind of alternating between your channel number and frequency in hertz and your logo. Um, so it's super easy to change kind of like before, but I thought it would be like a cool extra. So that was kind of an overview of how it's looking from like a user perspective at the moment, kind of visually. Like I said at the start, most of the changes are architecturally in the code. So rather than everything being in one big file, for example, is spread out over multiple files with namespaces and classes and things that kind of make sense to put it together. There's kind of a lot in there, so it's probably easier just to go and take a look if you're interested in that sort of thing. I hope it's easy to read, so please check it out and see what you think. There's quite a lot of forks of the Pro Diversity Code already, but what I think would be cool is if rather than just working it, people would consider uh, contributing their code back to the main project. Then we can have one like central cool here is the best firmware available for the Pro Diversity project thing altogether in one rather than spread out over hundreds of forks and stuff like that. So if you have any cool ideas or you've already made some changes or anything along that lines, please consider making a merge request and contrib contributing it back and then we can have something that's like really cool and stuff like that. By the time you're watching this video, the code should hopefully already be merged or about to be merged. If not, the merge request is there, so you can have a look through it, look at my branch, and see kind of what you think. Putting the firmware on your receiver is super easy, uh, and hopefully there'll be kind of there should already be a guide there or a bit of a guide on how to do that. And I can write up something to show you how to put on your own logo and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, check it out and let us know what you think or if you have any ideas, things along that lines. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.